Leonardo AI offers so many awesome features. And what's even more impressive is that they continue to add more and more all the time. But here's the thing, because Leonardo AI always provides us with new features, new tools, and new updates, it can be easy to lose sight of some of the more helpful ones. And that's a good thing because it's like a birthday party. Now hear me out. Imagine it's your birthday and you're receiving gift after gift. You keep getting all of these amazing items. Well, what can happen is that you've gotten all these incredible gifts, but you maybe forgot about one. Not necessarily forgotten about it, but maybe you've just been using some of the other ones more often. Well, that's exactly what we're covering today. More specifically, the image guidance tool in Leonardo AI. Two of the biggest requests I've seen for Leonardo AI are one, the ability to generate accurate text and words. Number two, the ability to create and generate consistent characters and images. Well, did you know that you could basically do that utilizing the image guidance tool? It's not quite perfect yet, but nonetheless, it's extremely helpful. For example, you can have an image of a person in a certain environment and then magically put them into another, all while maintaining the same character consistency. And make sure you check the links in the description because also today, I'll I'll be sharing with you an awesome prompt generator that will instantly spit out and provide 10 separate unique prompts all based on a specific style. Okay, so before we dive right into this, let me just first show you some history in the creations I've been making recently with image guidance. I took this image and used it as my image guidance image, but then I could easily transform it into this image right here. So notice, same exact person, but then when I add background is a tropical beach, look at the difference, okay? Here's this one right here, and here is the original one. So I went from just a generic gray background, now the one with the beach. And then you can throw in some different fine-tuned models and get all different variations of a woman at the beach, all while maintaining the same level of consistency. Again, same exact face, but now she's posed differently. And then you can really take it further, and now watch this. But then when you use an alchemy preset, like in this one, 3D render, same exact person, same pose at the beach, but now she has more of a 3D rendered look. Then, even further than that, this is where things really start to get fun. Look at this. Now I took things up a notch, same face. However, now this time I used 3D render and then I used an element called tune and anime. So you could get the same person, same characteristics, change the background all from this one very generic and easy prompt with no excitement in the background. So I'll show you exactly how to do that right now. But first let's head over to my mega prompts database and show you this new prompt generator. And so I will just remind you that you definitely want to make sure you do check the links in the description because everything I'm sharing with you today will also be there. Okay, so here we are over here in my Leonardo AI Mega Prompts database. Quickly, before I show you this prompt generator, let me just show you two new items that I added. The first one is going to be motion right here. So over time, I'm adding all of my favorite images that produced amazing looking motion items. If you click on the actual play button, it's going to expand it and now you could press play and now you could actually watch it live in action. So that's one new thing. The other new thing is going to be this prompt request form. So if you ever need help with a specific prompt, come and open up this form right here and simply just tell me the details. Okay, now with that said, let's come over here to this prompt generator. So I have it clicked open and I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole entire thing. So here is the full prompt right here. So you're going to take this prompt and first place it into chat GPT or Claude. Then once it's in there, you're going to give it one simple thing, just the sort of image you're looking to create. So in this case, you would just tell it, I'm looking to create a prompt for a supercar and then immediately chat GPT or Claude are going to provide you with 10 prompts immediately all specific for these styles right here. So over here in chat GPT, that's exactly what I did. I pasted the whole entire prompt in and then you could see chat GPT's response. Yes, I understand your request. What subject would you like me to generate prompts for? And then quite simply, all you have to do next is just then tell chat GPT what you're looking for. And then instantly chat GPT is going to give me these 10 10 prompts to use right here. And now here's the cool thing to keep in mind. Each prompt provides you with two different options. So I used the first one earlier and I copied the whole entire thing, but you don't have to do that. You could either copy the first sentence or the whole thing. If you do the whole thing, you're going to end up also pasting in these specific keywords. So if you notice, it's going to give you 
a prompt to use, in addition to keywords that are important in creating this image. When I pasted that full entire prompt over here into Leonardo AI, here it is right here, I even typed in the keywords for Leonardo AI. And then this is the image I got generated, beautifully done, because it's exactly what I was looking for. So we already saw what ChatGPT could provide for us. Now let's take the same prompt and now head over to Claude. Okay, and then again, instantly in Claude as well, it's providing us with these 10 prompts to use, all different, but all have style characteristics of these keyword styles I told it. So now let's head over and really focus on image guidance. Okay, so now I'm over here in image guidance. Now here's the first thing we wanna do. Select this first slot on, okay? I'm gonna remove the one I already have in there and we're gonna add a completely different one now, okay? So add an image to get started, simple enough, or you could select it from recent images. So if I select recent images, I can see all of my recent generations or I can actually add one from my documents. We'll choose the one I used earlier. This image right here of this lady looking directly into the camera. Now it takes me back to this page now, and now you could see that it's verified because it says it's using this image as guidance, okay? Now by default, it's gonna add the strength at 0 0.30. So for now, leave it just as this. And now up here, you could change your fine tune model. I'm gonna select photography, Albedo Base XL. I'll leave the strength on 0.3 for now, but you can see in my prompt now is where I said background is the beach. So it's gonna create same exact woman, but now the background will completely change, okay? Let's now go ahead and now select generate. So as you select generate, nothing will happen on this page. From here, you need to go back into your image generations. And then once I'm over here, you could see that it's gonna think and it's gonna give me three images I can then use. And then there you have it. Here are these three images. This did a fantastic job. So you could see it's the same exact woman, but now this time the background is completely different. Now the background is gonna be a tropical beach instead of that just boring gray sort of background, okay? So now let's take things a step further. Now notice, I still have my image guidance on right here. Okay, for now we're gonna leave it at 0.3, but this time I'm gonna add a little bit more details to my prompt. Okay, and then there you have it. I get three more prompts, but the thing you'll notice is that it didn't give me that full body I was looking for. So they still look amazing. I can't really tell if she's wearing yoga pants, obviously, because I didn't get that full body version, but that's okay. So that's a good example on how this tool isn't quite perfect yet, but that's okay because you can still do some amazing things with it. Now, to take things a step further, check out what we're gonna do next. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is here is where we're going to start to manipulate this and make this image look even more unique. Let's bring our strength down to 0.1, okay? 0.1 is as far as you could take it. What that's going to do is it's going to maintain some similar character consistency. However, you're giving Leonardo AI more flexibility to make the image a little bit different. I'll show you exactly how this works. I'll also change up my preset from photography to now dynamic. Now let's select generate and now watch this difference here. Okay, now check this out. Now, this is very important. These details matter a lot. I did two more images, and let me show you exactly what I mean. Let's look at this first row. As you notice, in this first row, nothing has changed with my original image guidance image. Everything looks exactly the same, except for maybe some very small, minute details. Maybe the details of her skin, if that, or even the color of her eyes, the shading. But regardless, there really isn't a difference. And the reason for that is because if I open this up right here, I wanted to show you an example of what would happen if you brought your strength all the way to the top. So like I said earlier, if you bring it down to a 0.1, that's the lowest, that means you're giving Leonardo AI more flexibility to not have to create a duplicate, basically. Once I bring the strength to the max, a 0.9, that's why I got this image that looks exactly the same as my image guidance one. So that is where you really wanna be mindful of that toggle scale, okay? So here is another great example. In this one right here, okay, I got a better job. Since I did use full body and I brought my scale down much lower, now Leonardo thinks it has the flexibility to really sway a little bit further from having the image look so exact. And that's why I got it here finally. So let me open up the generation info, okay? And you could see it right here, okay? I used Albedo Base XL, a different preset like you saw, I used dynamic, but now the strength is a 0.1. So now when I use full body wearing yoga pants, it's gonna give me more of an image that does show more of her body. So this one actually got it right and it did a great job. Now it did fall short here because it doesn't show her face, but that's where some prompt manipulation can come into play. Now let's do the same thing, Albedo Base XL. Now let's change things up to 3D render. 
Now here's where things get pretty cool. Again, I'm not gonna have my strength on that 0.9 because it's gonna create the same exact image like this, okay? A little bit different, but I don't want that. Let's bring it first down to 0.3 and we'll generate here on 3D render. And then I'll also do another one and bring it down all the way to the lowest scale to a 0.1. Okay, awesome. Now look at this. I did three separate rows just to show you guys the difference. Let's focus on the first one right here. Okay, if I open this one up, beautiful job. Now remember, I used 3D render. So that's why it looks exactly the same, but it looks a little bit different, more of a 3D feel. If I go to view generation info, here is a good example, okay? I use a preset 3D render. Now my strength is a 0.3. So it has a little flexibility all while maintaining similar characteristics and consistency, but now I have that legit 3D render sort of look. If we move up to the row above it, now you could start to tell the big difference. Now you could see in this case, I used strength 0.1. That means you're allowing Leonardo AI to have more control to sway further away from an exact duplication. And you give it more flexibility to generate something completely different, which then brings us to this third row right here. Again, very similar to the other ones, but if I do view generation info here, you could see we're kind of meeting in the middle. So now I have a 0.2 strength. So I have a 0.2 strength on the first row, okay? A 0.1 strength on this second, and then a 0.3 on this third. So based off of the slider on the strength, we're gonna get a completely different result. However, now let's really start to get things moving. Now let's make things very fun. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave everything the exact same. We're gonna move our strength all the way down to the minimum, a 0.1 because we want to give Leonardo the full flexibility to really make this happen because we're creating something completely different. So we're going to leave it at 3D render, but here is where things get fun. Now we're going to add an element. Click elements and scroll all the way down to tune and anime. Confirm that one and now generate the image. So we have tune and anime as an element and we have 3D render. And right now we're going to leave tune and anime on this weight of the default strength of one. Let's hit generate here. And while this is thinking, let's generate this one more time. But now let's select a different element instead. And I'm going to add one of the newer ones, sparkle core. Okay. This is going to create a glitter style image. You could add more than one element. Okay. So in this case, let's create one with tune and anime on, but then let's also create another one with tune and anime off just to see. So while those two are thinking, look at this generation we got right here with the first one we chose. Look how amazing this looks. So same sort of face characteristics still at the beach. Look at what a good job it did. You could definitely tell it's the same person, full body now this time, same thing at the beach. And again, this one, I brought the strength all the way down to a 0.1, but I'm only using the tune and anime element. But then what happens when you use tune and anime and sparkle core? That's what this first row is. Now check this out right here. I used two elements and now look at the images I got. I mean, pretty cool. If I go to view generation info, my strengths all the way to point 0.1. And now right here, you could see elements, sparkle core and tune and anime. And then if I wanna take tune and anime off, but maintain sparkle core, here's the image I got right here. Really not impressed with this one. Doesn't really look too much like her. Let's try it one more time. So then for example, look at these right here. So on this one, I got a completely different style because my element, I changed completely. So look at this image right here. She doesn't look too happy. Well, the reason for that is because I used the new element called dark arts. So what dark arts does is basically create dark sort of images. Specifically, it says more of like a gothic sort of look and feel. And that's exactly what we got on these three images right here. Okay, so now that we have that basic part down, let me show you one more thing. We're going to take things a little bit further in maintaining the same exact pose of an image. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and then use these same sort of images I used right here. So for that, we're going to come right back over here into image guidance. What I'm going to do instead is just just use the one in the middle, okay? To make it easy, I'll select a previous generation. So I'll select this one right here, okay? And then right here where it says image to image in this drop box, what you wanna do instead is just select it. And now what we're gonna do is select pose to image. So you can see what this says, detects the pose of any characters 
in any input image and we'll use this to guide your image generation. So let's select this one. And then I have this little exclamation mark where it says my aspect ratio doesn't match the dimensions of the image. Let's go ahead and change it up to where we can make sure it matches. And once I have that selected, 768 times 1024, that little warning mark goes away. And then it does the same thing with the sensitivity, all right? So let's just go ahead and adjust it a few different ways. That way I could show you the differences in my new generations. All right, so now check this out. Here are the first set of images I got on this bottom row. And again, based on the sensitivity, this one was a 0.55, I'm gonna get these three images right here. And I just said, beautiful blonde hair woman standing on a mountain. And then as we go up, I adjusted the sensitivity as well a little bit, but this time I put standing in a rainstorm. And then at the very top, this is where I move the sensitivity all the way over to the right hand side. And that makes it display a more closely related pose. So you can see the differences I got. All of them are maintaining the very same, if not similar pose. And then if I go back down to the bottom, it also did the same thing here. But notice on this second row right here, it's not really displaying any portion of her torso, it's only really showing her from like the shoulders up. The reason that is, is because if I open up my view generation info, you could see that's because my pose to image strength right here, it was toggled all the way over almost to the very end on the left to give me that 0.21. So again, remember, when it's on the lower side of things, it gives it more flexibility and more freedom to kind of pick and choose how similar you actually want it to be. So then when I compare it to this image right here from the first row, okay, I have this pose to image strength at a 1.0. You'll notice that because it's on the higher end, the actual pose is going to match my original image almost 100% identically, okay? So that's the comparison between when it's on the lower end of strength versus when it's going to be on the right. And then you can see it's going to be the same thing for this one. This image here was the strength 1.55 and that's why it's showing her and displaying her more closer to that pose where she really is standing up and with the original image you could see that's exactly what we have here it's really only displaying her from the torso up and that's exactly what we got when our strength is more on the right hand side all right so there you have it there are some good examples on how you can use leonardo ai's image guidance tool now like i said it's not perfect but there's no doubt in my mind that over time it's going to be improved However, make sure you are mindful of the presets you're choosing as well as elements and then the level of strength. Now, in order to get exactly what you're looking for, you might have to do it a few times by trying a few different options and methods and adjusting that strength. But once you do, there's no doubt you'll get a creation that's pretty close for the goal you have in mind. But let me know what you guys think. And thank you so much for watching this video. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button because you'll be the first to know when all these videos come out. But until then, we'll see you next time. Yeah.